Thank you, Michelle, and welcome everyone. We're glad you're here. And uh, let's get the screen transferred over here, and hopefully you're seeing the home page to our website. Um, if you're following along with the handouts, we're going to cover three things today. Um, one will be our uh, span calculator, and we'll show you some ways that you can navigate to uh, get there. And the second one will be uh, our connection calculator. And then the third will be a document called Wood Structural Design Data. So uh, when you get to our uh, home page of our website, you'll see something that looks like this. And these four uh, major icons are sort of the four, four areas that we uh, focus on. Codes and standards is where you're going to want to go for the technical information that we provide for engineers, architects, and building officials. And on this page, then, you'll see links to different uh, locations on the website. Uh, one of the more prominent ones here is the span and connection calculator. So clicking there gets you to this page. And you should have um, on that uh, uh, that you should have that as part of your handouts. So before we jump too far into the uh, presentation, though, let's take our first poll. And I'm going to ask Brian, if he will, launch the uh, first poll so we can get a, an idea of who's in our audience today. So Brian, go ahead and launch that first poll for us. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian with the American Wood Council. And as Buddy said, I'm going to be helping him today with the polls. So here is our first poll. And it is, what is your profession? So if you could please select one. OK, and most of the votes are in, so I'm going to go ahead and close the poll. And here are our results. It says 66% of you all are engineers. We have 18% uh, of code officials, followed up by professors and architects. All right. Thanks, Brian. That's, uh, that's really helpful. It helps me uh, as a presenter to kind of know how to tailor the uh, presentation. So um, again, if you're following along in the handout, here's a, a snapshot of, of some of the uh, online tools that we provide uh, through the American Wood Council. And uh, we're going to be talking about the span calculator and the connection calculator today. But I want to just draw your attention here uh, also to a couple other calculators that are available. This one called Beam Buddy does allow you to do uh, beam design for different loading conditions. Um, it was not developed by the American Wood Council. It was uh, actually one that we found out there in, in um, the uh, iTunes uh, world. It's, it's currently only for uh, iPhones and iPads uh, developed in iOS. But uh, we took a look at that and thought that was a pretty handy tool. So we've uh, partnered with them to be able to, to show that on our website as a resource for you. The Heights and Area Calculator um, is a pretty handy tool if you're trying to determine how big a wood building you can build. The one issue with this calculator, and this is on our list but to update, but right now this one's only uh, in accordance with the 2006 IBC. So we're, we're going to be working to get that updated to the current codes, but uh, just know that's um, based on an older code. And then the Woodworks uh, Carbon Calculator shown down here at the bottom. Uh, if you're doing green building design, uh, need to know uh, what kind of carbon that you're capturing in your wood structures. This is a pretty handy tool as well. But without further ado, we're going to jump into the span calculator and, and get going with that. Um, you notice that it gets kind of crowded over here to the left-hand side. There, there is actually a method for that madness. Um, it uh, does allow, uh, if you're using it on a smartphone, uh, to actually see it in a fairly uh, easy way on a smartphone as well. So if you've got a pretty small footprint, uh, it, it helps it to uh, show up better on a smartphone. Even though you, do, uh, you can download from the App Store the Span uh, calculator for the iPhone or the Android, uh, this, if you've got a web browser on your phone, you can see it uh, via uh, this uh, approach as well. 
But uh, we're going to jump in and uh, start sizing some joists and rafters. We're on page two of the handout if you want to follow along. You see that we've got different species and grades of lumber shown here in this drop-down box. So we're going to select the Douglas fir larch as our first attempt. You see that we've got different sizes of lumber. So we're going to choose a 2 by 10 uh, number two grade, and you see that we've got also MSR and MEL grades as well, some of the more common ones that are in use out there, but we'll select a number two, which is a pretty common application. We're going to look at some different uh, applications for ceilings and rafters as well, but for now let's start with a floor joist. We can do different deflection limits. We'll stick for this floor application with uh, L over 360 different spacings uh, up from 12 to 24 inches. We'll go with 16, which is the default. We're going to skip over wet service and incising for a second. Uh, you've got different live load conditions from 30 to 100 pounds per square foot and different dead load conditions as well. So we'll keep that at 40 and 10, which is a pretty common floor. Jump down here to calculate maximum horizontal span. And there you go, 15 foot 7 is the maximum span for that particular um, set of variables that we've chosen. You see it all gets uh, repeated down here in this table as well, these properties and values. These are adjusted design values down here. So if you were to apply an incising factor, a wet service factor, some of these values here will get adjusted um, per those uh, adjustment factors. It also gives you a bearing length here uh, that you can see, and so you can pretty easily print this out as, uh, as something you can use for plan submittals or uh, just to, to print out for, for your own uh, use in the design world. I mentioned the uh, wet service and uh, incising factor. So the exercise we just went through is for an indoor protected floor span, protected from moisture conditions. What if we've got a, a deck joist outside that's going to be exposed to wet service conditions? Well, we can select yes here for wet service conditions. And since this is Douglas fir larch, uh, we're going to select yes for an incising factor. Uh, and we'll talk about that here in a second. We're going to calculate that maximum span. We see it's a little bit reduced because of those factors that we've applied, and the bearing length is actually increased, again, because of some of those reduction factors. I'm going to show you real quickly, going to an FAQ on our website, uh, what that means, and this will show you how you can navigate around our website a little bit. Um, but this FAQ has to do with that incising factor. NDS section 438 deals with incising, and you see the adjustment factors here. Uh, talks about the wet service factor and how those are applied. So you get a sense of um, those uh, factors and how they affect your spans uh, when you're going through these exercises. So let's jump to page three of the handout. If you're following along, jump to uh, hem fur application. We'll try some different softwoods here. We're going to do a ceiling joist, so we're going to change that to a two by six change that to a ceiling joist. We're going to change our deflection limits to L over 240, assuming we've got a, uh, some, some sort of ceiling material incorporated. We're going to stick with our 16 inch on center. We're going to get rid of wet service and incising since we're back in an indoor application. And we'll just stick with a typical 20 and 10 loading condition. Hit calculate. You see we're at 12 foot 8 inches for that particular 2 by 6 in a ceiling joist application. We could also do a uh, rafter, and so I'm going to go up here, we're going to choose another soft, typical softwood species that's used out there, and we'll go to a 2 by 10, number 2, we're going to go with snow loads this time, we'll just keep L over 240 and keep our rafters at 24 inches on center. And you notice when I click on the snow load box, it doesn't give me a drop down menu, and that's because uh, snow loads vary all across the country. And sometimes folks are using ground snow loads, sometimes you have to modify them for the roof, so you're going to have to check with your local building official to see what the appropriate snow load is for your application. Type that in there, you do have some options for dead loads, but then you calculate your maximum span and hopefully, yep, 15 foot 1 matches up with what we have on our handout. 
So then we're going to jump, and I'm going to keep moving quickly so that we have time to cover all these applications. Uh, we're going to jump to the next page of the handout. We're going to change this to uh, Southern Pine 2 by 10. Now we've got all kinds of options here for uh, Southern Pine. And uh, that's because Southern Pine design values changed uh, back uh, in June of 2013. And so this gives you that option to use the newer values or those that existed prior to um, June of 2013, which some building codes um, you know, haven't quite caught up yet, and so they're still referencing those, those older values. So we're going to give you both options. So let's start with the pre-June uh, 2013 values here. Uh, we're going to say we don't have a ceiling, so we're going to change this to L over 180, and we'll leave the spacing at 24 inches on center. Uh, we're going to change this roof load to 20. I think actually we're doing a rafter live load in this case. So we're going to go live load, 20 and 10, calculate, and that matches up with our handout. So we're doing roof live load, 20 and 10, and we see what the Southern Pine values were for prior to June of 2013. Now we're going to go back up here and see what they look like after the change was made in June 1st of 2013. Looks like everything stayed the same. We hit calculate and we see the spans different uh, for those uh, post-2014. If you want more information about those changes to Southern Pine design values, again, you can go to our home page and over here on the right-hand side of the codes and standards page, there's some links to addendum that you can download for those particular changes that occurred. And uh, let's see, back to the calculator again. Oh, here's something that's often overlooked. So right below the calculate button is a button called go to span options calculator. And this is going to allow you to compare different spans. So we're on page five of our handout now. And I'm going to click on that button. It gives me a little bit different menu. So this allows me to select multiple species. I'm going to select Douglas fir larch. I'll hold down my control key, and I'm going to select him fir. And I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to select southern pine and SPF. I'm going to type in a 16-foot span, and just leave all the other defaults the way they show up there, and hit calculate. And voila, you see this little table here at the bottom gives you all those four species that I selected. And it's going to tell you for select structural, number one, and number two grades, what sizes work for those particular species and grades. So you can do a comparison, side-by-side -side comparison of different species and grades. And then if you want to go back and, and to the uh, single span calculator and check out one of these spans in more in particular or print it out, you've got that option to go back and and go back to that maximum span calculator. So this is a pretty handy feature that allows you to uh, calculate those span options. Of course, we've got limits of use here, and I'll pull that up real quick just so you can see that uh, this talks about those changes to Southern Pine design values, the scope and limitations of using the span calculator, and general structural requirements, similar to what you see in span tables for joists and rafters in the uh, codes. And then uh, the help button here, if you click on that, it's going to give you all the background calculations and, and uh, things that are happening that uh, show you the, the uh, bending calculations, the deflection calculations, uh, the shear calculations, and the bearing length uh, calculations that are all happening behind the scenes in the, uh, in the calculator. So I'm going to ask Michelle to come back on. We're about 15 minutes into our program, and, and we'll take uh, time between each of these segments to do a little Q&A. So if you've got some questions about the SPAN calculator, go ahead and uh, fire those into the chat box or to, to your question box, and, and I'll have Michelle uh, ask those as we move on through our seminar here today. OK, great. Thanks, buddy. We do have a few questions. Uh, the first question is, does calc the calculator do ASD and LRFD design? It does not yet. That's a great question. And we've not yet uh, calculate or developed the calculator for LRFD. So right now it's just based on allowable stress design. OK. Another question is, is the bearing length included in the calculated span length? 
Um, it is based on. That's, that's a, that's a great question. question. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure it's face to face of support. Span tables in the code yeah. are a little bit different than what we use uh, in the NDS. And let's see if I can find it here real quick. If I can't, we'll follow up on that one with um, uh, with the FAQ that shows up. But uh, I'm pretty sure that's going to be face to face of bearing. And uh, rafters. And I'm not seeing it here off the off the top of my head. So um, we'll follow up with that one in the FAQ that comes out uh, post. Uh, post, uh, after the webinar is completed, but I'm pretty sure that's going to be face to face with bearing. Okay, and one more question is: Are the snow loads that are inputted roof level or ground level? Well, and that was maybe a point I glossed over too quickly. But uh, for rafter applications, and I'm going to show here that the snow load does does not have a drop down window so you actually have to calculate the actual roof snow load that is used in your jurisdiction. Some jurisdictions go ahead and just use ground snow load, some require that you use ASCE 7 or some sort of modification of the ground snow load and you should be able to find that with the building department in your jurisdiction. If not, just give your building official a call and they can tell you what kind of roof snow loads they're requiring for your area. Okay, so I think those are, um, we're running, we should move on to the next session, but do you want to do the polls for? Yeah, so the next uh, poll uh, coming up is uh, whether or not folks are familiar with the uh, connection calculator. And Brian, I know I'm, I missed the, the last poll, so let's just skip that uh, okay. last one and go straight to the connection calculator and talk about that one. All right. And everyone, I've just launched a poll, and this is, as Buddy said, have you ever used the AWC Connection Calculator? So please select one of those options. And it looks like most of the votes are in, so I'm going ahead and close the poll. And here are the results. 19% of you said yes, and about 81% of you said no. All right. Well, that's really helpful because that means a good, a good portion of our audience has not seen this calculator. So, again, I'm going to show you uh, different ways maybe that we can navigate. Let me, let me do this, which is go to that codes and standards page. And notice this quick links bar here that's set up and there's some quick links to some of the more commonly uh, used um, areas of our website. And here's one on calculators. So you see that gets you to the calculators page. And we're going to jump to the connections calculator here. And this is the first thing you see when you when your screen pops up. And so I'll go over this here first. Uh, as opposed to the span calculator, which only does allowable stress design, you see that this connection calculator all does both ASD and LRFD. We're just going to do allowable stress design um, calculations today. It does lateral and withdrawal loading, and so we'll do an example of each of those today. It does bolts, lag screws, wood screws, and nails, and so we'll do, I think, a, a bolt example and maybe a lag screw example today just because of the time we have. And then for the bolts, we can do single shear with a wood main member, concrete main member, you can do double shear with wood members, and then double shear with a steel main member, which is unique, and so we'll talk about that in a little bit as well. But after you've had these initial uh, selections chosen, then you hit submit, and you're going to end up with uh, some more uh, input options here. So if you're following along in the handout, we're on page 8. So we're going we're gonna to go with a southern pine example. So we're going to scroll down here and select southern pine. We're just going to do a simple one and a half inch to one and a half inch uh, connection. So I'm going to select uh, those here, a half inch uh, bolt. Um, we've got selections here for low duration factor, wet service factor, temperature factor. If those apply, you can uh, select 
angle of load to grain for your main member and your side member. Uh, so there's a lot of um, flexibility with this calculator. And then you jump down here to hit calculate connection capacity. You see that you've got these different yield modes that show up. And we'll talk about that in a second, but let's look first at uh, the results, and it's uh, 531 pounds for this particular uh, set of variables. And you look up here, and you see that that's a mode 2 control. How that's calculated is based on these six yield modes, and the smallest one is what controls and what shows up here in the adjusted ASD capacity. I'm going to pull up my NDS real quick here so you can see if that actually matches up with what we have in the um, what we have in the NDS. So I've already navigated to table 11A of the NDS, and for this uh, particular example, we've got Southern Pine, uh, and this is just wood member to wood member connection. Uh, I've got a one and a half inch main member and a one and a half inch side member. I've got a half inch bolt. And let me pull this over to the side here so you can see that yield mode. Um, and then we come over here, and this is both parallel. Uh, the main member and the side member are parallel to grain, and we see that ends up 530, which matches up with um, the unrounded value here on the calculator. So in DS, we round down to the nearest 5, and you see that that's uh, consistent with our results in, uh, in the NDS. So we captured that in your handout as well. So um, let's, let's talk a little bit about those yield modes just to give you a sense of that. I'm going to go back here to my, to my NDS and, and we're going to jump here to uh, lateral values, scroll down. You see the yield limit equations here that are part of the NDS that allow you to, to calculate each of those values. And uh, Graphically, those look like this, and, and uh, so each of those yield modes is represented by something that we see in testing, whether it's crushing of the wood fibers in the main or side member, or the dowel rotating through, or a hinge forming in the dowel. Those are the six different yield modes that we see when we're calculating uh, connection capacities, and, and that's how those work. So. Again, we're going to keep moving fast uh, to be able to get through what we want to get through today. I'm going to jump back here, and we're going to look at a uh, concrete main member now. So we're still lateral, bolts, concrete main member, submit. And we're going to ch change this concrete um, embedment depth to 6 inches, because that's what we have in the NDS. We're going to go back and do a southern pine, 1.5 inch sill plate. Uh, let's go with a 5 8 inch anchor bolt. And we're going to leave all the other parameters the same. Hit calculate and our capacity there. Um, let's see, what did I do? Something. Oh, I know what I did. I wanted to do perpendicular to grain. So I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to go 90 degrees, which means that silt plate is loaded at a 90 degree angle to grain. And I'm going to calculate. And now we see that the capacity is 580 pounds. That's a mode 3S control. Um, and so um, pull up my NDS again, take a look at that, and navigate back to one of the tables in Chapter 11 so you can see those reference design values. We'll get down here to Table 11E and blow that up a little bit so you can see that. So we've got a 6 inch embedment, we've got a 1 and a half inch side member, we've got southern pine, and it's perpendicular to grain for a 5 8 inch bolt. We're at 580 pounds. Let's see if that matches up with our design value, which it does. And so you can see that this is based very specifically on what is calculated per the NDS. I'm going to go back up here now and let's do a steel main member. Now this one's actually interesting because we don't have a comparable table in the NDS. So this one allows you a little more flexibility in what you have in the NDS because you can go in here and select a quarter inch steel main member 
And let's change this over to Douglas fir larch. And we'll go with a one and a half inch uh, side members. And we're going to go with a half inch bolt. And we'll leave our load duration factors and everything the same. And run a calculation here. We see we've got a 1,500 pound connection. Now, if you were paying attention earlier, you know that there are only four yield modes possible for a double shear connection. And that's the one that controls. Uh, but again, this is some flexibility that's not shown uh, in the NDS that allows you to do some extra calculations. So let's move on page 12 of our handout. Let's do a quick withdrawal loading calculation. So we've got C for withdrawal, you can calculate lag screws, wood screws, and nails. We're going to hit submit initial value. We're going to leave all of these defaulted here just to quickly show you how we do a a withdrawal calculation. So we're uh, with um, Alaska in Alaska Cedar, and we've got oriented side, uh, oriented strand board for our side member. We hit calculate, and we see the withdrawal capacity 327 pounds, and that's a total value because that's already accounting for the two and a half inch length of the threads in that member. And as w we saw with the um, Span calculator, we've got our limits of use. It shows the background of, of uh, what uh, is assumed for all the calculations on this calculator. So I'm going to bring Michelle back, and uh, we're going to take some time now for questions to uh, keep uh, moving along here uh, so that we uh, don't run out of time before the end of our, before the end of our webinar today. So Michelle, why don't, you, why don't you come on back and take some questions. OK. We do have a few questions. Um, one has to do with what diameter is assumed when dealing with threaded fasteners? And how great question. That? Yeah, great question. So in the NDS, uh, there's a table in Appendix L. And I'm going to navigate there quickly so you can see that. And we'll expand that a little bit and show you. Uh, for bolted fasteners, there, there is a root diameter uh, for uh, lag screws, we've got uh, both um, reduced body diameter, full body diameter, and we've got uh, uh, both uh, main, uh, shank and root diameters for those as well. So the, uh, the, the diameters that are assumed for the calculations in the calculator are the threaded uh, root diameter. So we're assuming that those threads are going to end up in the shear plane of uh, the fastener. We also have some technical reports on our website that will allow you to calculate um, if those threads don't occur in that shear plane. But for the most part, uh, we're going to assume that the threads are always going to show up in the in the shear plane unless um, we know that uh, that shank is going to end up in the in the shear plane. And is that through for the tables in the NDS? Yeah, the tables as well in the NDS are going to make um, that that underlying assumption as well. So we're using root diameter in the NDS as well. And let me just go ahead and show real quickly so folks get a sense of um, that is. Let me open another tab here, and on our um, on our website is a technical report called TR12. And um, let me get to that technical report. So this technical report called General Dowell Equations for Calculating Lateral Connection Values gives you um, a way to uh, calculate those uh, design values um, and, and account for those threads not being in the shear plane. You can do that with the Dowell Equations as well in the NDS. OK. And um, here's another question. Let's see. Why uh, why are there no aluminum, cold foreign steel, or other materials included in the web calculator? Yeah, um, that's another really good question. We've um, gotten input for uh, several years now on adding additional fasteners. One of the problems is, and I'm going to go back to limits of use here just so we can get a sense for some of the standards that we use for, for fasteners. 
Um, bolts and lag screws are governed by these uh, ANSI standards, ANSI ASME B18.2.1, and wood screws per uh, 18.6.1, and nails per uh, F1667. Um, standardization is really the issue when it comes to other types of fasteners in uh, the NDS and for that matter in the uh, calculator. Uh, once we know there's a standard available out there that gives us uh, fabrication tolerances for those fasteners, and we know the physical properties like the bending yield strengths, then we can incorporate those into the NDS or some of our other design tools. But at this point, a lot of those fasteners are proprietary, just aren't uh, covered in the general literature out there. Okay, and then uh, let's do one more question. Um, on the connection calculator, are there adjustments for edge and end loading conditions, spacing, or groups? Good, another really good question. And um, this connection calculator is uh, strictly for single uh, fastener connection. So when we calculate a capacity here, uh, just based on whatever that first default was for that bolt, that is a single bolt value. And so things like group action factor and end and edge distance and spacings um, are additional requirements or additional checks that you have to do with the NDS. And Michelle will be talking in a little bit about uh, some of the software that's available out there. Um, and Woodwork Software is one of the programs that I can think of that does some connection design. Um, I might be mistaken. You can take a look at their demo, but I believe they may have some of those provisions for end and edge distance and spacing built into the um, Woodworks uh, software for connections. Okay, do we want to move on to the next section? or? Yeah, why don't we do that, and Brian, I'm going to ask you to come back for another poll question. So we're going to transition now to wood structural design data. All right, and actually while I have it up, I'm going to uh, post a link in the chat window for everybody for that section, and here is the poll. And the question is, have you ever used the AWC Wood Structural Design Data Publication? So if you all could make a selection. Okay, and it looks like everybody, or most of everybody, has voted, so I'm going ahead and close the poll. And here are the results. Uh, it's almost 50 50 with favoring no. <laughs> All right, excellent. Well, that is really helpful and actually a little surprising to me. That's a much higher. Um, use than I would have anticipated, but th this document has been around for quite some time. Again, I'm going to show some different ways you can navigate our site. WSDD is uh, here, and so it's got its own page, and, and notice that there is a, a version that you can download for free as a view-only version, but if you want to buy one that you can print or a hard copy, that's also available. You can also download it in different parts here. And so uh, I'm not going to download from here because I've already got it open on my uh, desktop to, to make things a little more efficient. So I'm going to jump there real quick, and we're going to uh, go to the index and jump up here to our first um, beam example. And so um, let's uh, start. And, and what you see on page 15 of your handout is uh, Maybe a little bit hard to follow, but I'm going to uh, try and navigate you through it. I kind of excerpted from different parts of the uh, document here. I'm going to open this up a little wider so that there's no clutter in the background. So in the beam section, this is where you'll uh, end up going uh, first if you click on that tab. And it gives some background on the load tables and, and how those work. and so we're going to look down here at the bottom of the page, starting 
bottom of page 58, top of page 59, uh, at example one. And this just uh, allow you to, to work through. We're going to look at a beam example, and then we're going to look at a column example. And, and what wood structural design data allows is for you to calculate uh, allowable loads on beams and columns uh, rather than a typical span calculator that you might see out there. This, this allows you to calculate safe allowable loads. So you have to know the design properties for those beams and columns, but if you, if you know that information um, and, and you can follow along with this example, it does give you a way to, to size beams and columns because it's real difficult to develop generic uh, beam tables and column tables uh, just because of all the different tributary areas that are out there, and different load conditions. So this one allows you uh, a little more flexibility in that regard. So I'm going to zoom in here to example one and scroll down. So I think it'll split across the two pages. This should be similar to what you're seeing in your handout. So we're here and we're going to assume a span of a beam span of 14 feet and uh, of F sub B value, a bending design value of 1400 PSI and we want to carry a total load of 8,000 pounds and we'll see that that's a uniformly distributed load of, a, of about 600 pounds per foot but uh, uh, that's the, the problem definition and so that's then prompting us to turn to the 14 foot spans and you see over here in the bookmarks we've got some bookmarks set up so that'll help you jump quicker to those uh, locations so um, again if you're following along your handout you won't lose this example problem here but we're gonna figure out um, uh, what species and grade of lumber works for this particular application so we're going to jump down here and scroll down until we get to the 14-foot section. So those are th all 13-foot spans. 13, now we get to 14, and you see my red box there because I've already highlighted this area. And again, I've kind of truncated yours uh, in your handout. But uh, the way this works is um, that you're in this 14-foot span section that's shown up here at the top and we're going to be under this column for 1400 PSI in bending. And so then I'm going to, I'm going to scroll down here to where I know that this 8,000 pound load showed up uh, in that red box. So I'm going to again expand that a little bit so we can actually see it and talk about the results. And so what this tells us is that for a bending design value of 1400 PSI, this 8,000 uh, pound load or 577 pounds per foot um, is going to require an F sub V and an E of 96 and 1.5 million. This this um, E value is in, th in per thousand um, psi. So 96 psi in shear and 1.5 million E. So what are we going to do with that information? Uh, we're going to have to go to the NDS supplement. And I've again, got that excerpted in your document at the bottom of page 15. And it's showing up here on the screen. So I'm going to expand that. And I'm in table 4D, table 4D of the NDS supplement. And this document's available online. This is the 2005 version. It's right there on that web page, uh, go back to the web page where WSDD is located. Right down here at the bottom is a free downloadable version of that 2005 NDS. And we'll be working to get the 2012 version up there pretty soon, don't worry. Um, and let me get back then to the NDS supplement. So we need a bending value of 1400 PSI. So we see that from this uh, from 1900 uh, dense select structural work, 1600 uh, select structural, and 1550 uh, dense number one works. Now, here's the, here's the thing, and there's a note just at the bottom uh, below that uh, excerpt from your handout for this 1350 PSI. If you have a load duration factor 
of let's say you're doing doing this beam for a roof snow load or a live load, you can increase that 1350 by 1.15 or 1.25 load duration factor. So that'll put you above 1400. And so we go over here to the shear column. This this column right here is for horizontal shear. Oops. And so we see that that's got a value of 170. Sorry, it's grabbing everything. 170 um, psi. So that's greater than than what was uh, required, which was 96. And then our E value over here for each of these, um, all the way down to that number one grade, uh, is above the 1.5 million uh, psi that was required. So this Douglas fir larch, any of these for number one and above will work for that particular example problem that we just went through. And so um, it is a, a little bit more difficult to use than a span table, but if you uh, work through the example problems that are shown here um, and use the supplement that's shown, then um, you, can, you can pretty easily navigate that and uh, come up with some safe um, load tables for different sizes uh, of lumber. Uh, similarly, we're going to uh, then go to the column table, and, and I'm just going to jump to the wood column section. We're going to go here to the general design table first. Um, this one doesn't actually have an example, so so um, I'll just uh, walk through a, a typical uh, sizing of a six by six number two southern pine column eight feet long. It's on page 16 of your handout. And, uh, if you're looking up at the top of the handout, you see that we're going to determine the maximum load on a six by six number two southern pine column eight feet long. So for this one, we're going to actually start with um, a design value. So we're going to go to our NDS supplement. We're going to jump down here to our Southern Pine design values. So we're going to scroll down here till we get to the Southern Pine design values. Again, we're in table 4D of the NDS. This is for 5x5 five five and larger sizes. Um, and I said we're going to look at a number 2 grade Southern Pine. So we're going to need a couple of properties here. I'm going to highlight them for you. And so we see, and it's similar to what's shown in your handout, that for a compression parallel to grain value up here at the top, we've got 525 psi, and our E value is 1.2 million. So that is for a number two, and that's notes that's already got the wet service conditions built into it per table 4D. So this is a five by five and larger. So this would apply to our six by six column, 525 psi in compression, 1.2 million. And bending. I'm going to go back. I'm going to open up WSDD again. So let's uh, let's figure out now what our uh, L over D ratio is. And down at the bottom of your handout, there's a little box there that says at the very top references you to page 215 of WSDD. So that's where. That's where we're, we're uh, going to be, right here on page 215. Um, and the reason we're here is because the 1.2 million E value is here on this particular page. And um, we're going to see that our L over D value is also on this page. And so if you look at the calculations that we did in your handout, an 8-foot column is 96 inches long. And we're going to divide that by the uh, depth uh, of the member, which is five and a half inches. It's a square column. And so that gives us a value of 17 and a half. So we're going to end up having to interpolate between an L over D of 17 and an L over D of 18. And up on the front end, uh, in the instructions, it talks to you about how to interpolate. So that's, that's uh, available to you. And so we jump down here to where our red box is located, and we see, oh, man, we've got a 600 bending here and a 400 here. And so that makes it doubly hard, because now we've got to double interpolate, because our, our compression value 
was 525 psi. So it's between these two values. So now we got to interpolate between all four of these values. Well, I've done the math for you in the handout. That ends up being 461 psi. And so you go back up here to the top, and I think that the instructions here say once you have that number, that the total design load on your column is going to equal that F prime C value that we just interpolated down here, which is 461 PSI, times the cross-sectional area of the column, which was five and a half inches squared. And so you, you do that math, you end up with, on the, on the bottom of your handout there, a value of 13,951 pounds is the capacity of an eight-foot southern pine six by six number two column using like for a deck application, an outdoor application. Almost 14,000 pound capacity. And if you go to our deck guide that, that we developed DCA6, you'll see um, that we've uh, we've uh, tabulated uh, a lot of those uh, deck heights or deck um, post heights for you and it's based on these types of this type of background uh, calculation. So I'm going to stop there and see if any more questions have rolled in. Again, we've kind of uh, moved through this quickly, um, but we'll stop there and see if there are any questions about wood structural design data. Michelle? OK, thanks, buddy. Real informative webinar. And I almost think we could make this a two-hour webinar with all the questions we're getting. OK. <laughs> but. Um, some of the questions, and the very good questions, is one, um, someone asked about going back to the calculators. Are those downloadable? Um, the apps are. So if you, have, uh, if you want an iOS or an Android version, you actually have to pay for those. But you can, you can download the uh, app versions. Uh, the web versions are not downloadable. And the reason we do that is because whenever there are new design values, like for example last year when the Southern Pine design values changed, uh, we don't want uh, calculators out there that uh, we aren't able to, to push an update to. And so we can do that on our website, we can do that with the apps. Uh, we can't do that if those get downloaded to, uh, to a, a desktop uh, and, and then we um, aren't able to push those updates. Okay. And I just have a question back to the span calculator. It, mm -hmm. Someone was asking whether or not they could do a point load on those calculators. Oh, yeah, a real good question. And the answer is no. Right now, um, these are for um, just simple span, simply supported single span applications. So if you've got a cantilever application or if you've got uh, uh, anything other than a uniform load, a concentrated load of some sort, then um, you're probably going to want to look at, uh, let's see, I think we talked about it earlier, um, the, this Beam uh, Buddy uh, program uh, that we talked about will allow you to do some of those cantilever and point load applications even for joists and the Woodworks uh, software. Uh, has a uh, beam and column module that will allow you to, um, to do uh, those types of uh, calculations as well. Or, or they could come up with a comparable uniform load that would give a point load. Moment. Yeah, that, could, that but that's, uh, that, that can get a little tricky and so um, we, we because in a lot of cases a, a point load is going to require that you, you make sure you have lateral bracing at that uh, location, mm -hmm. might require some other checks, um, might have some bearing uh, F, F compression perp um, implications. And so if you've got a, a concentrated load, you really, you really have to think about that and uh, think about all the other um, um, design issues that might be associated with that. Okay. Okay, the other question is with the WSDD, uh, the version that was pro that 
we have is um, 1992 version, and uh -huh. util there's I guess there's some confusion on utilizing this versus the supplement, and since yep. this is done in 1992. Yep, yep. Let me address that. That's a great question. The reason we don't have to update it, if you if you notice the format of the tables, and let me pull it up here real quick. The tables are really generic. They aren't tied to a specific bending or compression or E value. Um, the, the compression values and the E values and the bending values are tabulated here um, and then the comparable or the loads that you calculate from those E and FC values um, are, are tabulated. So this is really a generic um, table the, that you have to then use a supplement like the NDS to enter in uh, to, to get your capacity. So what we're able to do because of that is we don't have to revise WSDD. It's sort of timeless in the sense that those um, design values uh, stay tabulated the, the same way um, that, that they'll always stay. You just have to know what your uh, species specific design value is from the supplement here to mm -hmm. plug into WSDD here. So right. while we did some revisions in, 19, whoops, in 1992, the reason for that is because the design equations for columns changed in the 1991 NDS. So mm -hmm. we went from a three equation format to a single equation format. So we had to come up with this 1992 revision to the column tables. And so mm -hmm. that's why um, that revision took place then, and, but it's still applicable today. So it's just based on principles of mechanics and um, the demand side of the equation. Whereas, correct. Yep. Okay. That's correct. Okay. That's great. Great question. Uh, the other question had to do with in the tables, are those nominal sizes or actual sizes? Like 6 by 12? Yep. Really good question. Those are nominal sizes. And I don't know if we say that here anywhere. Let me go and see size of... Beam. Let me jump to the top of the table and just see if we say anywhere that those are beam sizes are expressed as nominal sizes. So that's at the very top of the table shown here. Okay, great. So I think uh, right now we should probably, I don't think we have any more polls, so maybe some of the other questions. You had a last, um, on your handout, a bunch of resources. Yeah, we did, and I think Brian has been um, uh, showing some of those in the chat window today, but uh, if you have your handout from today on page 17, what I've tried to do is provide uh, all or a majority of the links uh, to the uh, span calculator, the connection calculator, WSDD, uh, where this recording of this webinar will be after today our resources page, and I can just show you those uh, resource pages here is where some of our future events are coming up that Michelle mentioned earlier for uh, engineered wood products and then another one later on this fall. Um, if you go down here to our eCourses page, then the recordings of our webinars then show up here. So in a couple of days, Brian will have that posted. If you have folks who uh, missed it and want to see it, um, then they can go here to uh, to uh, catch up on uh, the uh, program that, that uh, you uh, got to see today. Um, we've got a pretty extensive FAQ section, uh, and there's a link in your resources page to that. Um, the easiest way to navigate this FAQ section, quite honestly, is to use this search window up here and search for keywords, and that allows you to jump to the, to the FAQs. And then finally, um, well, and I already talked about the software that's, uh, that's available. Uh, as well. And so um, this is uh, the page that you'll want to, uh, to bookmark uh, for future reference uh, that allows you to, to get to a lot of that uh, information. And again, uh, these quick links here allow you to navigate pretty quickly through the site and get to some of those resources. Okay, great. So um, I'll go ahead and change over to my presentation. We have a few more items to go over. 
let's see, make me presenter. Okay, as Betty mentioned, there is another software out there that's available through the Canadian Wood Council, which is Woodworks, and they do have a free demo that's available on their website. You can go to awc.org and go to our calculators, and we have a link to their website. Um, also, someone was asking about other portions of the Woodworks software. There's a sizer that does gravity design, shear wall design, under the lateral design, connections, database that you can include, add more sizes to the database. And it is has been currently updated to the, let me go up here, the US version has been updated to the 2012 NDS. One other advantage is if you are an American Wood Council design professional member, you do get a 10% discount for purchasing this uh, software. And it is available for educators and building officials for free. So feel free to contact them via our website. Um, for those of you that aren't aware of American Wood Council and what we do provide, we provide wood design and construction information to assist building officials, designers with, uh, and designers uh, developing with structural and fire performance data on a wide range of traditional and engineered wood products. And these are our major publications, the NDS, the Wood Frame Construction Manual, and the Wind and Seismic Provisions. And as I mentioned, we do provide technical support related to the building codes and standards in wood engineering design. If you have any questions whatsoever, you can email us at info at awc.org or just visit our website and you, there's a drop down menu over in here about, um, it says about us and there's contact information there as well. Now just summing up what I mentioned in the very beginning of the seminar or webinar for those of you that came in late, we will be following up with an email today which will include a survey link. We are very interested in hearing what you have to say of providing feedback on the webinar or even information on topics that you would like to, uh, to see presented in the future as a webinar. There will also be information on the certificates of completion which will be sent to you within two weeks of the webinar. And remember, you need to have 90% attendance on the webinar in order to receive those certificates. Also, if there are multiple attendees, um, please visit the link on our website that will be in the follow-up email to register those multiple attendees. And if you have any questions whatsoever, you can also, here's another education email address, education at awc.org. Our upcoming next webinar will be on July 24th on traditional and engineered wood products with complimentary registration. And then we have an intensive workshop at Virginia Tech on September 24th through 26th on prescriptive and engineered design per the 2012 wood frame construction manual. And thank you everybody for joining us. We appreciate that you're taking time out of your busy day to join us and please feel free to fill out that survey because we are interested in hearing from you. Thank you.